our immune system is amazing. Not only that it has the ability to protect our bodies against harmful viruses and bacteria, it also protects our body against cancer. Our immune system has the natural ability to detect and destroy cancer cells. Sometimes we want to help our immune system and build memory. And for that, as kids and growing up, we get vaccines. These vaccines program our immune system to detect and to recognize a pathogen. A pathogen is the cause of the disease. We are working on cancer vaccines. And this is important because cancer is a very sophisticated disease. Cancer cells develop the ability to evade the immune system surveillance. They can hide from it. They can inhibit it. Or sometimes there are just too many cancer cells and they overwhelm the immune system. Our cancer vaccine in preclinical models in mice was able to stimulate those immune cells that were inhibited, to give them the power to destroy the tumor, to seek new tumors, destroy them, and remember them. Sounds pretty amazing. Let me tell you how we, we did it. But first, let's talk about vaccines. When we get vaccines, we, usually the pathogen is given when it's inactivated or weakened. It is perceived by our immune system as foreign and start a chain of signaling events that leads to the activation of B cells and T cells. Both of them are immune cells. Activated B cells produce a protein. It's called an antibody. This antibody can bind to a specific structure on the pathogen and to signal to other immune cells to come and destroy this pathogen. T cells can themselves kill cells that were infected with the pathogen. But the most important part about the vaccine is the generation of memory cells. And these memory cells, if they encounter the same pathogen in the future, they can respond to it. But now the response will be stronger and faster. Cancer vaccines use the same immunological mechanism but they're slightly different. The pathogen vaccine is given before the onset of the disease. Our therapeutic cancer vaccine is given after the tumor is detected. We are injecting directly into the tumor immune modulating molecules. And these molecules stimulate T cells within the tumor to destroy the tumor, to expand, to go out in the body and look for other cancer cells, destroy them. And just like with the pathogen vaccine, in cancer vaccine, the most important thing is the generation of memory cells. But now the memory is not against the pathogen, it's against the cancer. This is a really nice idea, but now we had to find those molecules that could perform it. And for that, we needed a really good screen. And for the screen, we chose, we chose mice. Mice immune system is similar to ours, relatively. In our mouse models, the mice were inoculated with two tumors. We injected directly into the tumor the molecule that we tested, and we could, have, we could assess the effect of this molecule on the tumor we treated, but we had also the other tumor that was not treated, and we could look at the whole body effect the systemic effect of the, of the molecule. We had a control group of mice that were not treated at all, and their tumor kept on growing and growing. Some of the molecules that we tested had exactly the same effect. They had no effect whatsoever on tumor growth. Then we tested a molecule that is called CPG. It's a short sequence of DNA. It doesn't have a signature like mammalian DNA. It looks more like a viral or a bacterial DNA. And it, when it was injected directly into the tumor, it was recognized then for, as foreign and started a local immune response that was sufficient to regress this treated tumor, but it didn't have much of an effect on the non-treated tumor. So it wasn't good enough. We kept on searching. Then we tested a different molecule now it was a protein, an antibody. 
And this antibody target is expressed on T cells. When the antibody binds the target on the T cells, it activates them. The name of the target is OX40. The name of the antibody is anti-OX40. When we injected anti-OX40 directly into one of the tumors, it caused also only a slight delay in the tumor growth. But when we combined CPG and anti-OX40 in the same syringe and injected it into one of the tumors, not only did the treated tumor completely regress, now also the non-treated tumor went away. The mice were completely cured. We waited three months, which is a long time in the lifespan of a mouse. And then we re-injected those mice with the same tumor cells. And none of the mice developed tumors. They were all resistant to this cancer. They all had memory of this tumor. We tested the combination of CPG and antiox 40 on mouse models of melanoma, breast cancer, colon cancer, and lymphoma. And in all of them, it was successful. Cancer vaccines are part of a treatment that is called immunotherapy. Immunotherapies are treatment that meant to enhance your immune response to fight cancer. When you're enhancing your immune response, you can also stimulate an immune response against the healthy tissue, and it could result in autoimmunity. By injecting directly into the tumor, we could reduce the dose to one one-hundredth of the dose that you would use for systemic administration, hoping that this was, will result in less autoimmunity. But it raised a really important question. Is there something specific about the immune response that we are enhancing here to the tumor, or are, is it something general? And to answer this question, we had a different tumor models. And now the mice were inoculated with three tumors. Two of them were identical. Here in orange, shown, for example, lymphoma. And another one which was different. Here in green, shown, maybe colon cancer. We treated only one of the identical tumors, thinking that if there's something specific about our immune response, we will see the effect only on the other lymphoma tumor, but not on the colon cancer. And that's exactly what happened. We wanted to confirm our findings, so we repeated the experiment. But now we had two colon cancers and one lymphoma tumor. We treated one of the colon tumors and only the other colon tumor went away, not the lymphoma. So we could stimulate an immune response that was specific to the tumor that we treated. Human tumors, not like these mice tumors, tend to be more heterogeneous, meaning that the cells are slightly different from one another. So now we wanted to know, can we stimulate an immune response against cells that are slightly different from one another? And for that, we now had a, a different model where we had one tumor that consisted of a mixture of a lymphoma cells and colon cancer. And we had one separate lymphoma tumor and one separate colon tumor. We treated the mixed tumor thinking that if we can stimulate a response that is against different cells, we'll see the response afterwards also on the lymphoma and the colon cancer. And that's exactly what happened. All of these tumors completely regressed. All of these mice experiments were done so far on transplantable tumor models. But now we wanted to learn more about a more natural way of tumor development. And we, for that, we chose a strain of mice that spontaneously developed breast cancer. They developed breast cancer in all their 10 mammary glands in a sequential manner. So the first one ar ar arises and then throughout the body. This is a very aggressive model. And like human breast cancer, it also sends metastasis to the lungs. We treated only one of these tumors, the first one we could detect. And we monitored the tumor growth throughout the body. 
This is the only time in my presentation where I'm gonna show you a picture of an actual mouse. But I think it's important to see. All the red arrows indicate tumor cells. This is a non-treated mouse. But that's what happened when we give only three injections of CPG and antiox 40 to the first tumor we detect. Not only that the tumor load is significantly reduced, the number of the lung meds is also reduced and the mice live longer. We think that these results are amazing, but they were all done in mice. A couple of weeks ago, the first clinical trial was open to evaluate the combination of CPG and antiox 40 in patients with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. We believe that promising results will lead to more trials, testing in different types of cancers. As for the preclinical work, our work here is not done. I'm going back to the lab to now work on a more aggressive tumors to see what we can do to tumors that do not respond to any therapy, what we can add to CPG and antiox 40 to make them now work and respond to therapy. And we're not alone here. Researchers all over the world are working on immunotherapy, looking for the next molecule, looking for the next target, looking for the next combination that will make our immune system even more amazing. Thank you.